Hello, may the good Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our topic today is making peace with your past. Genesis 32 verses 1 to 21. Over the years I've learned that many people live their lives carrying a great deal of baggage. They have hurts from the past that affairs them in the present. They have mixed it. They, that, that they can't seem to escape from the wounds, that they can't seem to be overcome. Some have been treated shamefully. Some have treated others shamefully too. There are people who were one time good friends, who haven't talked to each other in years. There are some who have not talked to their family members because of something they, that happened in the past. Jacob was one of these people. He has been separated from his family for 20 years. There is no record that his family came to see him. They might have, but we know that Jacob has not gone back, gone back home in this time. In 20 years, he has not so much as talked to his brother, his twin brother Esau. This rift in the family took place because Jacob took advantage of his brother when he was hungry and then stole the blessings his father Isaac meant for Esau. He did this by pretending to be Esau. It was an offense that made Esau so furious he thought about killing his own brother. Jacob may have been a deceiver, but he wasn't stupid. He knew that it was time to put some distance between him and his brother. He went to his uncle Laban's house where he married twice and had 12 children. He had been gone 20 years and now it was time to go home. The Lord told Jacob it was time to go back to the land God has given Abraham and Isaac. But there was a problem. One problem. Esau. In the verses we, we have read this morning, I have told you, the book of Genesis, we saw that Jacob sought to be reconciled to his brother. It may surprise you that Jacob is the one who extends the olive branch to Esau. He could have ignored the situation. He could have avoided Esau for the rest of his life. Some people do that. I suspect this would have been Jacob's preference, but he couldn't do that. Why? I think the answer is in the first two verses. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is the camp of God. So he named that place Mahanem. This is the second time that angels appeared to Jacob. The last time was in Bethel. At that time, he will remember Jacob saw angels ascending and descending, a ladder or staircase to the throne of heaven. Now, once again, Jacob sees a host of angels camp of God. Both times the angels were sent to strengthen, encourage and spur Jacob on. Now, what does this have to do with Esau? Let me explain. The consistent testimony of scripture is that every time someone has an encounter with God, they are changed. I think this encounter with the Holy, Holy Ghost made Jacob aware of his need to make things right with his brother. His conscience was awakening, and the wrong he did was made clear. It was time to mend the relationship that he had been torn through Jacob's deception. Jesus told his disciples, If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Matthew chapter 5. 23 and 24. There are several good reasons to pursue reconciliation. God commands, commands it. He has reconciled us to himself and now calls us to be reconciled to each other. Do you recall the words of the Lord's Prayer? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For if you forgive the men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father would not forgive your sins. God tells us that 
we have not appreciated the debt God has forgiven us. If we are not willing to extend forgiveness to others, future relationships result in miserable lives. It is impossible to enjoy life fully if you are living at odds with someone else. All that time nursing grudges and tending the fears of resentment and bitterness takes valuable time away from the joy of life. Many people find that their misery left as soon as they do what God has called them to do, to be reconciled. There are few acts as loving as freeing someone from their past. I try thinking of a great illustration of this principle and then realize that you and I are a great illustration of this truth. Has there been anything more freeing in your life than when Christ forgive you? Followers of Christ are driven by God's Spirit to make right relationships that are wrong. Sometimes it involves an apology, sometimes an act of restitution, sometimes all it takes is a phone call. Could it be that this morning there is a name that has popped into your head again and again? Is there someone with whom you have a fractured relationship? If so, I suggest that God is giving you an assignment. He's calling you to be reconciled with this person. Jacob sought the help of the Lord. I admire Jacob. He knows what God wants him to do. So he sent servants ahead of him to tell Esau that he's coming. He tells the servant to tell Esau that he was doing what's just fine and didn't need to make any claims on his family inheritance. Jacob wanted Esau to know that he was returning, not to cause trouble, but to rebuild their relationship. The messengers returned and told Jacob that Esau was coming to meet him, and they happened to add that he was bringing 400 men with him. <laughs> now, does not appear that Esau was coming with any hostile intention? He was probably coming with part of his servants or tribe to pay his brother honor. But of course, Jacob didn't know that all Jacob could remember where the final was of Esau. I'm going to kill him. See, mend amendments today with your life and go to God in prayer. Reconcile with one another and then you will have peace in your heart. God bless you. Amen.